Well, we're all familiar with the cliche, don't give a person a fish, teach them how to fish. But actually, that's not good enough. We need to do more than teach people how to fish. We need to teach them how to sell a fish. If all you do is teach a person how to fish, you create a village of fishermen where everybody catches the same fish, they all sit at the same side of the road, sell the same fish, the fish rots and they go home. You get nothing more than an existence economy. What we need is to teach people uh, how to sell a fish. So someone will say, well, I'll make the boats and I'll make the nets. And someone else will say, well, I'll can the fish. The other says, well, I'll make the hooks and I'll make the nets. And someone says, I'll be the fish fryer. And someone says, well, I'll do the accounting. And you actually create a, a market economy. This, I am absolutely convinced, can be done through local churches. We're doing it through local churches all around the world. We have set up uh, microcredit uh, banks through churches. We have worked with many microcredit agencies like Grameen and others, where when someone says, well, the microcredits are available or the microfinancing is available, but then you first have to teach them the principles of saving. One of the great places to teach them things like that is uh, in, in houses of worship. Um, if I were to, to make my case, I would put on the screen three, uh, three little uh, 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 slides. Uh, a year ago, I was the closing speaker. President Bush asked me to be the closing speaker for the Global Summit on Malaria. And I said, let me just show you how, whether it's malaria or any other problem in the world, we're not going to solve it without having the mobilization of people at the grassroots. When you talk about grassroots, you talk about people in mosques and churches, in, in uh, temples and things like that. I said, let me just show you one example of what we're doing. And I threw up a picture, and I said, this is the western province of Rwanda. 700,000 people live in this province. It's totally rural. Uh, they have two doctors for 700,000 people. And I said, here are the three hospitals. They're all staffed by volunteers, and it's a two days walk to any of these hospitals. Rwanda is a mountainous country, so you have to walk two days just to get to the nearest hospital. And that has no indication that you're going to actually get in, even after you get there. So that's not enough health care. By the way, two of those hospitals are faith-based, and one of them is government, so you wouldn't have two-thirds of it anyway. Then I said, here's the second picture. And I put up a picture, and I said, here are the 22 clinics in western Rwanda. Now, it's still a day's walk to any one of these clinics, and if you've been anywhere around the world, you know the clinic often means a bottle of aspirin on the shelf, and that's it. I've been in clinics where there was a microscope and nothing else. So it may be just a closet. Uh, but it's a one-day's walk to any of these clinics. Um, and, uh, and it, it, by the way, uh, those 22, 20 of them are church-based, and two of them are, are, um, are government-based. I said, now watch this. And I put up the third slide, and it was covered with dots, black with dots. And I said, now here are the 726 churches. Where would you like to go to get your health care? For that matter, where would you like to go to get your education? Where would you like to go to get uh, your loan? Whatever. Uh, I, I was spoke at the, the Global Summit on AIDS in Mexico uh, this year, and I was told by uh, uh, Minister of Health of Rwanda, they said that 98% uh, of all Rwandans live within one kilometer of a church. That's instant distribution. So somehow we have to figure out how to get business and government and churches to work together. What is this about? It comes right out of, as we've often quoted, John 3.17 in Peterson's message. Well, let me quote it for, okay. for our uh, listeners. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. And supposedly that's John 3.17. Yeah, what does John 3.17 say? Let me quote it. For the, God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And in paraphrasing it or fixing it up, expanding it, Eugene Peterson, what does he do? He destroys it. Mm -hmm. He changes the meaning. But well, this is why... He has an agenda here, Dave, that's anti-biblical. But... This is one reason, must be one reason, why Rick quotes the message so often in The Purpose Driven Life. Because this is what he is intending to do. Now, he didn't give that away at the very beginning, but you could have wondered. You see, what this does, Tom, 
Well, we've been talking about it, not by works. It lowers it to the level now. Man is going to do this. And, and why isn't it nice that Jesus was sent into the world to help us make the world right? How are we going to do this? Well, we're back to the same old problem. Mm -hmm. Not by works of righteousness that we've done and so forth. So mm -hmm. here we are. We're going to build a new world. This is what Rick now is trying mm -hmm. to do. Hey, David, let me just add this. What we're seeing here, we talked about Laterine, Christian Reconstructionism for the, the non-charismatics, the, the Reformed theologians and so on. But this was all oriented toward the church. In other words, the Reconstructionists, they were theonomists. They were going to apply the law. And when people saw how Christians were applying the law, they were going to be impressed by that because that's what was going to bring about changing the earth in, into a paradise. Mm -hmm. But now what we're seeing, and we've seen this lately from uh, Rick Warren, is that we're going to work with all religions. I'll give you a quote here. This, I believe, he was interviewed by a, a Pittsburgh paper. He says, Who's the man of peace in any village? The idea is, is that he started out by saying there's a church in every village. They don't have schools, they don't have this, they don't have that, but every village has a, a church. And if we can put all these churches, if we can put them together as distribution points for things like medicine and for teaching, for education and all of that, that's how we're going to solve the world's problems, what he calls the, the global giants. Well, anyway, he says, who's the man of peace in any village? It, it might be a woman of peace who has the most respect. They don't have to be Christian. In fact, they could be Muslim, but they're open and they're influential and you work with them to attack the five giants. And by the way, he started out with five giants, and then he's added another one, which is global warming. He quotes a secular leader who affirms what he's doing. She says, I get it, Rick. Houses of worship are the distribution centers for all we need to do. Now, Dave, the grievous part of this, the tragic part is, is that when you work with other religions, aren't you saying to them, look, you can please God by doing something for the common good. You're people of faith, and as long as you're doing this to the glory of Allah or, or Brahman or, or whoever, Kali, you know, whoever, this is a good thing. Tom, this has been going on for a long time. Pat Robertson talked about people of faith, mm -hmm. and Bush has talked about people of faith. Yeah, the faith initiative. It was a right. part of his legacy, he believes, uh, for his tenure. Yes. People of faith. We've been into that before. People of faith. What do you mean by faith? Faith in whom? What God are we talking about? Well, now, tragically, it seems that Rick has joined this crowd because this is the popular way to go. And doesn't matter. What, what, what do you believe in? We're, we're the local witch doctor. Well, he's a man of faith, too. It could be, uh, you've pointed out, it could be the local imam. People of faith. So long as you have some kind of faith, religious faith, then you're okay. God will accept that. You're on your way to heaven. We don't need to give you the gospel. That's the great tragedy. So when we're, we're joined together with these people in this common cause, it seems so good. We're working toward a good end, a better world, and we're going to work together on it. But then, as you point out, Tom, then we're giving them the impression that they have the same faith that we have in the same God, or it doesn't really matter. And Dave, they're being saved by their works. That's what they have to come to believe. That's right. And we are leading these people to hell.